Agricultural Risk Coverage, ARC, has a county-level program called ARC-CO or County ARC. ARC-CO establishes a revenue floor for each program crop based on county revenue. County ARC payments are made if the actual county revenue falls below the county guarantee. There's a process involved for calculating this county guarantee, and I will go through that process, but from a farmer's perspective, you really you have to understand a little bit how it's calculated. But in the end, it operates as a guarantee, and if the price times the yield falls below that guarantee, you trigger ARC payments. So the county guarantee is 86% of the county benchmark. The county benchmark is the five-year Olympic average of the county yield times the five-year Olympic average of the national marketing year average price, that same price that PLC uses. Then your actual revenue will be the county average yield in that year times that national price. Um, so you'll get a payment rate there. Again, for ARC, it'll be um, the county guarantee minus that county um, actual revenue. And um, so if there's a gap of a revenue loss, and there's a maximum limit of 10% of the county benchmark. But then once you have that payment rate, if it, assuming there's the guarantee, it's the actual revenue for the county is below that guarantee, it'll trigger these payments. Then it's that same general formula, 85% times the base acres, but now it's times that ARC payment rate, which is the gap between the guarantee and the actual county revenue. We'll work through an example here of the um, process, but first we're gonna talk about some of the tweaks they've done to the program. Um, some of these were in place before, but they've made them even more farmer friendly. There's lots of floors and caps in the calculation of the county revenue guarantee and for the Olympic averaging. First off is there's the marketing year average price, but when they calculate the guarantee for each county, they use the minimum of the marketing year average price or the reference price. So for example, um, for corn, it'll always be 370 or higher. Um, there's also a minimum county yield. So if your county yield is low, they, it might actually trigger this um, floor or a cup on your county yield. Um, it's 80% of what they call the county T yield. The county T yields are defined for crop insurance purposes and they're fairly low. And it, this county T yield won't trigger for most Wisconsin commodities and crops in most years, but if we have a very bad year, that floor on the yield might matter. The other one is that county yields are also trend adjusted, just like they are for crop insurance. And that trend adjustment um, increase, increases the average because these programs look several years back, oh, up to five years, um, we'll see it's actually more like six. Um, and so that guarantee using those historical averages is low, it doesn't ac account for the trend. And so we add a, um, a couple, three bushels or more each year based off of the trend in some counties. Um, I mean, we have largely um, growing corn yields and soybean yields in many counties in the US. The last thing that's changed from the last time around is there's no lag year. The 2019 calculation uses the 2013 through 2017 yields, it does not include the 2018 yield. Um, that's because it takes until 2019, September of 2019, to finish the 2018 marketing year. And so with sign-up time, if they have it um, before September 1st, they won't know your guarantee. And so what they've done is they're preparing us to move to earlier sign-up deadlines when it's an annual election. It'll be before September, and so they're using the um, five years that are already on books uh, on the books at that time. And so, like I said, for 2019 sign up, it's the 2013 through 2017 production years that are used, not the 2018 years not included. So you can see here is an example we've worked out. This is for non-irrigated corn in 2019 in Dane County. You can see the years are there, 2017 through 2013, and those are the county yields for non-irrigated corn in Dane County. Um, it starts at 194.54, 194.54 uh, bushels per acre, and then goes all the way down to 2013 at 183.67. And the, the county T yield, as you see, won't matter. There's, it's very low. It's, it's, way, it's way below that 183. So the county T yield doesn't matter as a floor in Dane County for this, these, these years. The trend adjustment is already included there. Looking at the crop insurance papers, it's, it's 1.93 bushels here per year in Dane County for every year before 2018. So it actually adds um, several bushels per acre back to the 2013 data. Um, and so when you, you do the um, Olympic averaging there, you throw out the high and the low. So you throw out that 214.63 um, bushels per acre in 2016, and that low of 183.67 in 2013. You take the average of the remaining three, and you can see we're getting an Olympic average of the yields of 194.37. We do the same thing on the prices here. Um, those are the national marking year average prices for corn. And you see we have 336 for a couple years, 361, then 370, and 446. We do our Olympic averaging, and we also have to put that price floor on there. 336 and 361, those, those are both below the um, 
370 reference price for corn, and so the price floor is imposed. Then we drop our high and our low, and so you can see we'll drop the 370. I took the first one, and then we also dropped that 446 in 2013. So we're left with three times of 370 as, as the price that's averaged, and so Olympic average of 370 is 370. And so now we have our um, way to calculate our county um, benchmark. Um, 370 is that Olympic average of the price times at 194.37, which is the Olympic average of the yields. And then you get 719.17. The art guarantee is 17 or the art guarantee is 86 percent of that. So we can see it's 618.49 um, dollars per acre. Then the maximum arc payment then is 10 percent of the county benchmark. So even though if it falls very far below that county guarantee, it can only pay out a maximum of $71.92 per corn base acre. So you can see there's a lot of um, detail that goes into calculating those county guarantees. From a farmer's perspective, you don't have to get deeply involved in the, the making of that guarantee. Those guarantees are all available. You can look up your county or working with your um, FSA or other people that know where these are on your, on your, on your own, you can look them up. So once you have that guarantee, let's go with the one we have here. We'll work through a simple example. So the guarantee for Dane County in 2019 is 618 um, and 49 cents for um, revenue. Suppose, we'll just make up some numbers here. Um, Dane County actual yield, we'll say is 171 bushels per acre and then national price for corn over the marketing year, we'll just say is 353, both it's pretty low, but 171 times 353 is 603. Um, 0.63, so $603.63 of actual revenue, well below the guarantee. So now you have a ARC payment would be triggered. So 618 minus the guarantee, or the guarantee minus the actual of 603.63, it triggers a $14.86 per acre um, payment. That's well below the maximum payment rate, so that will be the ARC payment rate, 1486. So in this example, if you have 100 base acres of corn, then your ARC payment would be 85% times 100 base acres times a 1486 or $1,263.10. So that's how the ARC payment um, will work. And I think the key to note there is you can get very much into the detail how those guarantees are calculated. But for most people, they're fine to understand the guarantee and that it's tied to actual yields in the county and the revenue at the, or the price at the national level.